up everyone? I'm your female otaku and I'm here to review episode 3 of Ruby Volume 5. And with this episode, we didn't really get any action at all, which is pretty cool because this was a very important setup episode, a really intriguing one, and I'm excited what's gonna happen on from here on out, especially with the training between Ozpin slash Oscar and Ranger. Oh, I'm so excited for that because when Ozpin was, you know, taking over Oscar's body and was talking to Ranger and mentioned about, you know, training and stuff, at first my face was just like, you know, Rangers, I was just all like, Ozpin, we know how to fight. We were at the Fall Beacon, like, we've come so far, what do you mean? But he was so right as always, cause he's Ozpin, like, they still have a lot more to work on, especially Ruby. She only knows how to fight with her weapon. And John, even though he has come a long way, I am proud of the guy, he still doesn't know what his semblance is. How cool would it be if, like, in the middle of a battle when all hope is lost, Jean just, like, comes up out of there and it's just like, yo, watch me use my semblance, bruh, and it's, like, so epic and awesome, and we're just like, damn, bruh, that's exactly the reaction we're all gonna have. That exact scenario that I said is what's gonna happen. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. Let me talk about what happened at the very beginning of the episode, and that is with Blake's father and him making the announcement to all the faunuses. He reveals the true plan with the White Fang, or really what happened shortly before <laughs> Adam, you know, killed Sienna and took over the White Fang completely. Cause as far as the other Faunuses and you know, the Belladonnas know is that there's still only that one little sect within the White Fang that Sienna Khan is still alive. Oh, how wrong they are. It really sucks, man. They were, they were so close. They were so close, but no, they just have to be, you know, an episode off. Elia just so happened to be in that crowd and she was trying to pump up everyone, being all like, hey, are we really gonna help out and protect the humans who have treated us horribly? And you know, it's actually pretty cool that Rooster Teeth is bringing up this kind of situation now with, you know, the whole inequality stuff as it's very true today, of course. I mean, of course it's been true all throughout history, but I feel like it couldn't be more true now with, you know, all the extra protests that we have today and stuff, but I don't want to get too into that as, you know, that kind of discussion can get a little dicey. Basically, I'm happy Rooster Teeth has balls. Maybe they should be called Rooster Balls. And oh, now I have a weird image in my head. I'll stop, I'll stop. What I didn't know about Oscar is that, well, I knew that Ozpin was within him, but I didn't know that Ozpin can completely take over Oscar. So that's pretty interesting because we then shortly find out that this has happened to Ozpin for a real long time, throughout centuries. He's been here since the very beginning of Remnant and his mission is to protect Remnant. But unfortunately, he failed to defeat Salem and was cursed by the gods. So that's a lot of info. Now we know that gods exist in this world. So we're... Where are they? What are they doing? I don't know if Ozpin has ever had his own original human form. I don't know if he's ever had that. For all I know, he's actually a deity who has been cursed. You know, something out of Norse mythology. I know he's not from Norse mythology as Ozpin is based off the Wizard of Oz, but still, I don't know, because Ozpin is now just a moving soul. He just, he's just a soul. He just possesses other bodies and he's been doing that for so long. So, the body that we once knew, the original Ozpin that we've known throughout the majority of Ruby, was some other guy. Did, uh, did that other guy die or something? Because Ozpin completely took over this dude's mind for the entirety of Ruby Volume 1, 2, and 3. What? I'm starting to confuse myself, let's just move on. I just gotta say, let me talk about Nora for a real quick second because this girl is still funny through and through, honestly. Nora, she's, she does the same exact thing. Her jokes just land every single time. Her cartoonish nature, she's so peppy and happy and I just laugh every single time, you know, she says something, honestly. Like, Nora's the best, I love her, wanna give her a big ol' hug, just... Ruby wouldn't be the same without her, just have to say that. So Weiss is now a hostage to the bandits, and we don't really know what the bandits want to do with her just yet, but what we do know is that Winter isn't around, at least according to the bandits. And 
The girl that Weiss was talking to, she happens to be in the opening, and some people have theorized that that girl just so happens to be the Spring Maiden. But fear not, for Weiss has a plan, as she has perfected her semblance, and her semblance will set her free. I gotta say, it's really convenient that it's a knight of all things, with its own blade. Like, wow, how lucky can you get there? Overall, super excited for the next couple episodes as they're most likely gonna focus on training, and I really wanna see Ranger improve, like, Ren is already so badass. So how much more badass can the dude get, right? Same with Nora. Like, I don't know how these two are going to improve, but I'm excited either way, man. And it'll be pretty cool to see Ruby start to learn hand-to-hand -hand combat. And John, well, I'm just happy whenever the dude's on screen. So let's freaking go. Let me know your thoughts on this episode and if you're excited for the upcoming episodes. And also let me know your thoughts on Ozpin, as since we found out the truth about his character, I really want to know your thoughts on it. Any other theories that you could have on what exactly he is or was? And the whole gods thing is really messing with my mind. So yeah, let me know your thoughts. I'm your female Otaku. Sayonara.